Good morning and welcome to CMC Markets on Thursday the 15th of March. The time is just gone 9 o'clock and this quick preview of the week beginning the 19th of March. In front and centre I think next week is going to be the latest Fed meeting as well as the Bank of England rate meeting. I think they are going to be the dominant themes against the backdrop of equity markets that remains very uncertain um, with respect to the tariff story. Um, an awful lot of upheaval in the Trump administration, the departure of Gary Cohn, uh, Chief Economic Advisor to President Trump, as well as the departure of Rex Tillerson, Secretary of State, to be replaced by Mike Pompeo. Now, Mr. Trump does appear to have replaced um, Mr. Cohn with Larry Kudlow, CNBC commentator. Um, that's what he's best known for, but I think if you dig back a little bit further, into the not too distant past, the 1980s, you'll find that he was an economic advisor to President Reagan. So he does have an economics background and maybe, just maybe, he will temper some of the worst instincts of the US president. There has been talk that he could be looking to implement um, a wider range of tariffs against China. The number of $60 billion has been mooted and that is, that is weighing on risk appetite to a certain extent. Now, the narrative of this story could well change between now and the weekend and now and Monday. So obviously when I'm recording this video, um, that really needs to be taken into account. That being said, we have seen a little bit of a pullback from the recent highs in the S&P 500. We only just about managed to push um, beyond those post bounce February highs around about 2,800. And I think that's going to remain a key level. But what's also I think particularly interesting is some of the economic data that's coming out of the US because if you if you believe the story that we're going to get three to four rate rises this year then the, the payrolls data would appear to suggest that's a realistic option but some of the more consumer-led data would suggest that maybe that's slightly optimistic and that is being reflected in US bond markets. Yields have slipped back from those highs that we saw earlier this year at 2.95%, briefly touching 2.8%. Retail sales have been disappointing. Headline CPI has been disappointing. Wages have slipped back. So that really doesn't feed into a narrative that rates are going to go up much more than two or three times this year. So I think the weakness of that soft data um, is likely to weigh on the dollar going forward, not to mention, obviously, further concerns about a trade war. But again, that is a developing story. Will Larry Kudlow rein the president back? Mr. Kudlow's instincts are very much strong dollar and anti-tariff, though it has to be mentioned that in the Reagan era there were some targeted tariffs and so maybe you know we could get some development on that particular narrative. But ultimately the focus on the coming week is likely to be on the Federal Reserve. What sort of decision are they going to make going forward with respect to the dot plots? We're going to get a rate rise. I think that's pretty much nailed on. I don't think any of the data that we've seen over the course of the past week really reflects a change in that particular narrative. The narrative is going to be around how does the Fed see the US economy going forward? How does it see what's going on with respect to political um, shenanigans in Washington, D.C.? And is that going to temper their expectations for their outlook for the US economy and the global economy in general? Moving on, we've also got the Bank of England rate meeting. And once again, not expecting any change to policy there, though the markets are starting to look at a potential rise in interest rates at the May meeting. So I think the narrative coming out of the Bank of England is likely to be, likely to be very important in the context of the data, how policymakers see the UK economy against the Brexit backdrop. So if we can look at that in the context of the pound against the dollar, we can see a quite decent evidence of a little bit of a range compression going on with respect to the pound. It is a pretty similar story in euro dollar as well. What we've got here is decent area of resistance around about 140. We can see these three successive peaks here. We've got a couple of dojis over the past two days, which does suggest that the market is very undecided about where it's going to go to next. Overall, I think on the downside, as long as we stay above 137.10, then I think the prospect is that the pound should remain fairly well supported. Um, certainly, I think in, in the context of euro sterling, I think there's more downside pressure than there is upside risk um, prevalent in that particular cross. Um, a couple of other items I'm keeping an eye out for in the coming week is the France and Germany flash PMIs. They're out on the 21st of March. And I think they're going to be particularly interesting in the context of 
some of the slight softening that we've seen in the survey data, particularly in the context of um, the February numbers. These March numbers, these flash PMI numbers could give an indication as to whether or not the softness that we've seen coming off the peaks in December will continue to start to trickle down over the course of the next few months. And that could have significant repercussions for ECB monetary policy, where inflation still continues to show a significant degree of softness. And I think that's what is tempering, I think, the upside in euro dollar. One other item that is going to be of particular interest, we have a raft of earnings announcements. FedEx's Q3 results, always a good bellwether of the US economy in terms of how many deliveries they make. But we also got an IPO. The IPO on the 22nd of March is Dropbox. And that should be fairly interesting. I will be writing a little bit of narrative on that, which you can find on the website. But overall, what is Dropbox? It's a secure file sharing cloud computing solution. And it's valuing the company at around about $7 billion. Is that too high? Is that too low? We looked at Snap a year ago, and that was valued at $20 billion, which was way too high. It was an absurd valuation, and I still stand by that. I think that it could well be too expensive. And let's not forget that Dropbox's main competition in the cloud computing arena are Apple and Microsoft. So it is very much a one-trick pony when it comes to the actual market that it actually operates in. So keep an eye out for Dropbox on Thursday. That could be quite an interesting uh, little, um, little, <laughs> little company to see some movement in. So that's it for this week. Don't forget to tune in to my colleague David's webinar on Monday, 12.15. Otherwise, have a great weekend and uh, see you all next week. It's Michael Houston talking to you from CMC Markets.